Hey everybody, welcome back to Shops and Stones. This is Jordan. Today we're going to talk about guided systems and how to use them. So today we're just going to cover the basics. We're going to cover you know, how to set up your guided system. We're going to cover the very basics of clamping and we'll cover actually how to get your knife sharp. From that point forward, there will be a series in the future that's actually going to cover in-depth education on guided systems and like how to do specific things like, you know, stropping, getting a mirror polish, maybe sharpening a tanto, other things like that. But for today, let's go ahead and dive down and get this knife sharp and show you how to do it. All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to sharpen a knife on a guided system. I have here the TS Prof Cadet. Uh, this principles that I'm showing you here today can be applied to most other guided systems, okay? There is a couple little niche things here or there that may differ, but for the most part, you will leave here with a full understanding of how to sharpen a knife on a guided system. So the very first thing you wanna do when you go to sharpen a knife is inspect your edge. If there is something that you don't feel comfortable doing Based on what you see in your inspection, you may just want to skip it or see if you have a knife that has a similar issue that you don't care about so you can practice on that one first. The main issue you're going to run into is a edge that is really uneven. So you can look down the center of the edge and see if it's like pushed really far one way or the other. You do get that a lot in factory edges. Or if you have really severe chips, that could also be a, an issue anything that involves removing a ton of extra material okay so if you don't feel comfortable that's fine just hold it off send it to somebody who knows what they're doing or practice on a knife you don't care about once you've inspected your edge then you can go ahead and do the next step which is very common when you're using a guided system and that would be to tape wherever you're going to have the knife in the clamps okay so i'm going to put a, a nice long piece of painter's tape almost from the heel to the tip, not quite, but maybe an inch left on either side. Now, I don't really care about this knife, so I don't have to do this, but I'm going to anyways, just for the sake of demonstration. Okay, so I got one side done. I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means, because again, it's just there for the clamp. So if it's shorter on one side than the other, it doesn't really matter as long as wherever you decide to place the knife in the clamps is covered, okay? So the next thing we need to discuss is protecting the heel or ricasso area of the uh, knife. Because when you go to sharpen the knife with this you know, rod in your stone carrier and you get to that heel, it's very easy to go too far. So. I learned a really cool trick from a uh, gunny sharp talk and that's to use this zip tie you see here. And basically that limits how far the, uh, the stone can actually travel and prevent it from hitting this ricasso or messing up your plunge or anything else like that. Uh, other people use tape as well. You can just tape this area off, but the problem is if you consistently mess up in that area, you will uh, just shred through the tape with the, with the uh, stone that you're using. So, uh, zip tie seems to be a real nice winner. Uh, on this knife, again, I don't really care. I wouldn't normally use this on this type of knife, but just for the sake of examples, there we go, okay? All right, now that we went ahead and covered the uh, prep work, let's go ahead and get into clamping. So when you're clamping your knife, you wanna get it in the center of the cutting edge, not the center of the blade, not the center of the knife. Now, the reason why I say that is because say you have a big choil right here, you'd want it to be center of that. But in this case, we have a knife that is sharpened from heel to tip practically. So we're gonna just try and get it in the center of the entire knife, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and clamp that. I wanna keep the spine generally uh, parallel to the system itself, in this case anyways. Now, before I fully clamp this down, I wanna explain something. If you have a knife that has a really big belly, or like a, uh, yeah, like really big belly, like a clip point or drop point, you may have to angle the, um, the spine 
towards you. So you want to bring that tip towards you to keep the angle consistent. I'm not quite sure why that or how that works scientifically speaking, but your angle will get higher when you keep it straight out like this and you have to travel with a really big belly. Again, I don't really understand uh, why that is uh, or if I'm just doing something wrong. And trust me, I do stuff wrong. So if anybody has a solution or knows why I am doing wrong, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I will highlight that comment and you know make sure we explain properly uh, as to what the correct solution is for that. So anyways, you wanna clamp this down nice and tight, okay? That is pretty important. You wanna make sure you don't have vertical blade place. Your angle doesn't change when you flip from one side to the other. You wanna make sure you don't have any horizontal blade play, okay? That way, when you're just flipping this around side to side, that your angle isn't shifting ever so slightly. Now, notice I didn't like go crazy and torque it down insanely. I just did it tight enough to where it's not moving around, okay? So, other than that, that's going to be the general consensus on clamping. Now, there is going to be more in-depth... Uh, methods that you can do for very specific issues that you may uh, run into like tantos and other things like that. But generally speaking, general, general clamping looks like this. Okay. All right, guys, so let's get into angles. So when we find our angle, the first thing we need to do is consider what stone we're using. So I'm using just basic diamond plates here. And generally speaking, if you're using the same brand of diamond plates, they're all going to be the same size most of the time. However, a lot of people use different types of stones, stones that wear like resin bonded diamond stones, aluminum oxide stones, silica carbide stones, so on and so forth. Okay. So when you're setting your angle, you really have to compensate for this. Even if you're using diamond plates, it's still beneficial to do so. So every system has a way, whether built in or aftermarket to compensate for stone thickness. And in the TS Prof, you put it here and this little, you know, eye, eyelet goes up and down and locks into place with the stone. So I lock that up. I put my stone in the stone carrier and you know, on the TS Prof, again, it's a little different than uh, other systems on how you get your angle. But for me, I will make like a cross here on the blade, center of the blade. I center the stone on the blade and then I turn on my angle cube, set it here and I will zero it out. And there's one downside of TS Prof is zeroing it here is a pain because it wants to move so much, but there we go. Got it. Okay. So now it's zeroed, go ahead and get that out of the way. Set this here on the uh, on the clamp assembly, and right now I'm reading at 16 degrees. Now I know that this is already set up to be at 17 and a half degrees uh, for this edge, so I'm gonna set it there really quick. All right, so 17 and a half degrees. Sorry, keep hitting the camera there. Now, you're not always gonna know what angle you're sharpening at. So if you look right here, this is how you see if your angle is set too high, okay? And if you look down here, that's how you see if your angle is too low, okay? So as you see, basically in those photos, what we did is we took a Sharpie and we marked the edge bevel, okay? And then generally speaking, you want to put your highest grit stone in, which would be like the 1100 grit or sorry, 1000 grit in my situation. But based on whatever stones you're using, you want to put your highest grit in there. Um, the reason why you want to do that is because you want to make a quick pass over the edge bevel. And based on how much sharper it removes, just like the photos I just showed, will tell you if your angle's too high or too low. Okay. 
when it's just right, your Sharpie will be removed all the way across the edge bevel. And that's how you know you have the right angle. Again, I'm not going to go through that whole process here. You have the photos to see what it looks like. I already know my edge uh, angle is 17 and a half degrees. So um, once you're done with that, you're going you're gonna to want to go ahead and basically verify that your uh, edge angle is the same on both sides just to make sure you're verifying that you're clamped properly and that you know, you're not running into any other weird issues. So you would mark the other side with Sharpie, make a pass, and make sure that your angles are consistent on both sides. Now, there will be situations where the knife just came with, you know, uneven edge bevels. But, you know, that's that's a story for another day. And that's something that can be corrected. Uh, but if it's a knife you've sharpened before and you know that, you know, your, your edge angle should be the same, then this will definitely work every time. All right, guys, so we've already covered how to prep your knife, making sure you've inspected it, get the tape on it, zip tie, the whole nine yards. We covered how to clamp it, making sure that the knife is centered, angled properly in the clamps, and we've covered how to find and set your angle. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into the juicy stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get into actually sharpening. So the very first thing in sharpening we're gonna talk about is mechanics. Now, when you're sharpening your knife, you put your stone in the stone carrier here and you get to a sharpening, right? So when you're sharpening, there's a few different ways you can move this rod. You can go vertically like this, okay? And go all the way across the edge. Some people do it a little differently. Some people will make one pass along the whole edge. That's a little harder to do on a very large knife, like a, like a chef's knife like this. Um, then you can also do kind of like a mix between the two where you make a long pass, long pass, long pass, long pass. And that's actually how I'm gonna do this knife. I'm gonna make long passes all throughout the edge of the knife. Cause me personally on smaller knives, I like to make one long pass. Now, the reason why I like to do that is because you really wanna be careful to remove steel evenly. Okay, that's, that's very important, removing steel evenly because if you're going like this and you're doing your vertical sharpening all the way across, there's a good chance if you spend a little too much time at the heel or at the tip that you're going to remove more material in one area. Say you overlap too much in a certain area, but then you kind of extend a little further in another. You can remove more material in this area where you were more concentrated and remove less material over here, which will give you like a wavy S-like uh, edge bevel, which you want to avoid. So you want to try to remove as much material as possible evenly. Now that leads into a common mistake that people make when they're, especially when they're first getting into sharpening with a guided system, is that unintentionally they'll roll the, the stone when they're sharpening. When they're over here, they'll angle the rod like this towards the heel removing more material, especially on the edge of the stone that's making the most contact, right? And when they get out towards the tip, they angle this way. Same issue. You're going to remove more material in that general area. Now, sometimes you kind of have to if the knife has a decent belly, like it'll just naturally kind of curve over. Now, this is not a good example, but if you, you can kind of even see it here where the knife will just slowly slant that way. But you notice like here, it's just... You know level so just keep that in mind you know sometimes even halfway through the blade people are just going this way unintentionally you need to do your best to keep the stone flat on the edge bevel okay so let's go ahead and cover the heel and the tip real quick so when you're getting to the heel say you're not using a zip tie and you're just winging it you have to be very careful not to hit your uh your acaso there okay um, you also have to be careful not to angle your stone carrier, like I just said, and you have to be careful not to remove too much material. A lot of times the heel of a knife is messed up and you kind of have to remove a little bit more material to actually get it apexed. And sometimes people don't do that very well. They'll remove way too much material and their heel will be really tall and all kinds of jacked up. So... You have to do your best at just trying to remove that material evenly, be patient, and go through it. Another thing you can do 
is go at a higher angle at first, remove the material to even it all out, and then go back to your actual angle and continue with your sharpening. Another thing you can do uh, when you get to the tip here is, sorry, not another thing you can do. So when you get to your tip, you have to be very careful as well. Okay, so when you get to your tip, you wanna sharpen, but you do not wanna actually go past the tip very much. I mean, sometimes it's almost impossible not to go past it by a couple millimeters. But when you're sharpening up here, you wanna be very careful, you wanna slow down, and you want to make sure that you try not to go past that tip. The reason being, if you go past that tip, it makes it very easy to roll your stone over and roll over your tip. You don't want to do that, okay? It ruins your tip, makes it very hard to fix, and honestly is cosmetically just hideous. So make sure you just try not to go past that tip more than a couple millimeters. So if you have to slow down significantly when you get to the tip, that is 100% fine, okay? So that's kind of the basics of how to do this. So I'm gonna run through, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sharpen this side until it builds an apex. I'll flip it over, I'll do the same thing, and then we'll cover burn minimization. So here we go. All right guys, so I built a burr on the first side. Okay, so let, let's cover again for like the 500th time what a burr is. So we have our edge bevel, this is it, right? So we've removed material now from this one side, okay? We've removed that material, okay? And now we've removed so much material that we've reached the apex here, the very tip, and now it's pushing metal over. So we're having a little, little area of a little like hair-like fiber all the way across the opposite edge just looking just like this, okay, of metal that needs to be removed. But that's our indicator that we've reached the apex, the very tip, the you know, part that makes a knife sharp. So we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same to the, to the other side. All right guys, so now we built the burr on the other side as well. So now we're gonna do what's called burr minimalization. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is make a few passes on each side. Say, for example, I'll start off with five passes on this side, five passes on the other. Then we'll go down to four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. And then we'll probably do one a few times. And it's not exact, that's just an example. Maybe I might do seven, five, three, two, 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 one. One. like it really just depends so we'll uh, get that process going and see how that comes out for us you hear that burr Oof. that burr is on there pretty thick right there and that's gonna get knocked off now notice when I'm doing this I'm going edge leading so I'm going I'm pushing the stone into the edge I'm not doing edge trailing pulling into me I'm pulling into the edge or pushing into the edge sorry now I just feel like that does a better job of knocking the burr off. Because when we're doing this, what we're doing is essentially flipping that burr back and forth until it becomes so weak it just completely breaks off, okay? Think of like a piece of plastic that you may need to break. You would generally like literally just bend it back and forth until it snaps. That's the same exact thing we're doing here. Now, how much you do this for really just depends on what steel you're sharpening and how big your burr was. Um, once you've been doing this for a while, you start to get a little feel for when you should stop. But especially early on when you're dealing with the coarser stones, it's not like vital that you get it perfect on these early stones. It matters more when you get to your finishing stone. So 
now we're ready to go on to our 600 grit. Now our 600 grit should be the same, but we'll just verify anyways that we reset our stone thickness compensation. Every time you change stones, it does not hurt to spend the extra five seconds it takes to, to verify that stone thickness, even if you're using diamond plates, it's well worth it. All right, so, and just to verify our edges, the correct angle, we will do Sharpie again. Now, yes, this is redundant, but again, when you're taking the time to sharpen a knife and you want to be this accurate, it is worth spending the extra couple seconds to do these stupid little redundant things. Like in case there's ever an issue, you can diagnose like, hey, right then and there, you know, you know, like, hey, this is what went wrong. Instead of finding out the hard way later, if you get to the end and your knife isn't as sharp as you want it to be, well, what went wrong where? You don't know. So if you just take the time to do it now, it makes it much easier to diagnose your problem. So let's go ahead and start. And you see it's removing that Sharpie just fine. So we're good. So now we're just gonna go ahead and uh, do the same thing we did on the last stone. We're just gonna go try and remove that previous uh, grit scratch pattern and build a barrel at the same time. And then we will go ahead and move on to the next stone after that. So I'll see you back there in just a second. All right, so now we're just gonna go to our last stone, which is the uh, thousand grit. Again, these are the Grit-O-Matic basic diamond stones. They're pretty awesome for the money. All right, oh, I forgot to do my stone thickness compensation. And this one is actually off, just a little hair, little hair. All right, final stone, let's go. where I want it uh, with a thousand grits. So now I'm gonna do the burn minimalization. Now I'm gonna do it a little different this time. So the first few passes, I'm gonna do edge leading, pushing into the edge to try to break off that burr. Once I feel that the burr is broken off, then I'm gonna do edge trailing, like I'm stropping almost after a few passes. Then we should be just about done with the stones. All right, so I feel like I've bur broken off the burr, but just to clean up anything that might be left, now we're gonna do those edge trailing, so pulling in towards me, strokes, just like this. Alright, so I just finished up those edge trailing sto strokes with the 1000 grit. So I have some newspaper here, we're just going to try and cut and see how it does. Awesome. That is exactly what we're looking for off the 1000 grit. So we finished up the sharpening process. All right, guys, sorry, my camera died. Um, but anyways, I finished the whole sharpening and didn't get to record the last little bit. So we're just going to redo it. All we have left is dropping. You'll notice my tape is missing and zip tie, all that shebang. But again, not the end of the world. It's just for shopping. So let me get into dropping here. Um, you're going to have to notice one thing that's m massively different. That's the stone thickness overall. So again, like we've done on every other stone, we gotta compensate for that stone thickness. So, 
just gonna go ahead and insert this really quick. Make sure it sits on there very nicely. Take this out. And all we're gonna do is edge trailing straps towards me. Now, a lot of people will ask, how much should you do this? I mean, it really depends. You can kind of get a feel for it. If you feel like you're running into some material, then you may have a little bit of burlap that you have to um, remove. You'll feel that in the form of like resistance. You'll feel resistance when you're trying to strap. And if you feel that, then you need to go just a little longer. It should feel pretty smooth, smooth like glass. And it's kind of the same thing as before. We're gonna, you know, progressively get less and less strokes on each side. All right guys, that does it for stropping. Pretty simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this knife out real quick, do a quick cut test and give you guys my closing statements. All right, guys, so I just got done with the stropping. I think the edge looks pretty good. Again, keep in mind, this is only a 1000 grit diamond plate with a one micron strop. Uh, I use gunny juice, so it does have a pretty nice high shine polish there. All right, so let's see how she cuts. I'd say she cuts pretty good. All right, so that was how to sharpen with a guided system. Again, this is just the basics. This will allow most people to take their knife, put it in their clamps or on their table and sharpen away and get a sharp knife. Now, I know I may have missed some stuff. So if you know that I missed some stuff, please leave it in the comments. If it's something that's valid, I will definitely highlight that comment. Uh, even if it's something that is borderline, I mean, everyone should get the uh, opportunity to see that for sure. This community really thrives when people help each other out. So don't, never be afraid to ask a question. Never be afraid to leave a comment. I am not perfect. I am not the smartest person in the world. I am not the best sharpener in the world. And I will be the first to admit that. So I'm never scared of feedback. Please leave it all, okay? Um, other than that, I don't really have much for you guys other than to let you know that there will be more in-depth you know, videos that will cover certain issues um, such as clamping or, you know, how to hit, you know, the heel of spider coats, for example, and how to sharpen a tanto. And there'll be plenty of other videos that we can discuss more in depth issues that may arise when using a guided system. But for now, this is a good way to get you guys into sharpening. Uh, other than that, uh, the only other thing I really have for you guys is one, I would like some feedback. I have an idea uh, where users or viewers, I'm sorry, can send in videos and photos of their edges. Say we have a beginner and he doesn't know why his knife isn't sharp. Well, maybe you can send some close up pictures of the edge bevel or some cutting videos and say, hey, look, I can't figure out what's going on. You know, we can help diagnose that. We can, you know, make a video out of it for others to see and learn from. Another good idea would be for really experienced uh, sharpeners to send in their edge videos and photos so we can take a look at that and give people some motivation. We can discuss their progression. We can discuss, you know, the cutting abilities, the type of edge that they did. And, you know, people who are getting into this hobby have goals to strive for. Let me know what you think. If it's something that you guys want to do, I would think it would be a fun video to do. Maybe once a month, once every other week, depending on, you know, how into it you guys are. Um, other than that, the only thing I really would like from you guys is just to like, comment, and subscribe. I know it sounds cliche, and I really hate saying it, I do, but it helps get this channel some publicity. And that's what, at the end of the day, we really want. I want more people here. I wanna get more people into sharpening. The EDC community especially has blown up massively in the last couple of years. 
and I feel like not enough people are involved in sharpening their own knives. So I think it's time that we get everybody here to try and learn how to sharpen if they choose to, obviously. Other than that, that's it. Uh, if you guys ever want to reach out, you can hit me up on Instagram, at Shops and Stones. And that's all I have for you guys today, man. Peace.